Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of season 2 of the Arnivore Podcast. I am Sadie, I will be your host. Also known as Blue Rune on Ravelry, and I believe Sadie Rune on Twitter and Instagram. Don't quote me, but you can go to my Rav page, it has a link. Um, I know I said I was going to record before Christmas, but I got the flu. There's nothing else to say about that. I was I was shut down by some bugs. I actually I started feeling fluish on like the 22nd, the eve of the 22nd, the 23rd. I knew I was in trouble, and by the 24th I was just a factory of snot. So there were a couple days of of no knitting, no anything actually. I just kind of laid there comatose. You know, as one does when they've ingested NyQuil, um, watching Hubby play Dragon Age 3, I believe it is. It's the Inquisition one, um, which he got for um, himself for Christmas. Well, like, I mean, we got we got Christmas money and gift cards, etc. So he he got some games. I am on my second cup of coffee today. I'm a little chilly. This room is always chilly because we keep it that way. Uh, each of the rooms have their own thermostat. So this one is usually at the lowest setting just because we're not, in, when we're in here, we're usually doing stuff and you get warm doing stuff. Whereas when we're not in here, there really is no point. Um, Really, I shouldn't have needed to give you that explanation, but I felt it necessary because I needed to share that little tidbit of information. I am, before I go on, I guess, I am wearing a Clapoti, Clapotis, Clapoti, very French Clapoti. Uh, it's an old one. This is, this is an older thing. I'm not sure if, if it predates the podcast or not. It is out of uh, Socks That Rock Woo Boo, I believe, the Woo Boo, in the colorway Tanzanite, which is actually a much darker purple, but because the Woo Boo has like bamboo or something in it, it does turn out lighter, but it's nice and huge, and it's warm, so many, many a Saskatchewan winter wrapped up in this bugger. Let me tell you, when you're waiting for the bus stop at minus 40, I actually never waited for the bus at minus 40. Usually I scammed a ride at that point. But, you know, minus 20, you still want to be pretty bundled. That's Celsius. Um, almost three years in the U.S. of A, and I still have not converted to Fahrenheit. I kind of understand the differences, but personally, I will never... Uh, be able to transition myself to actually knowing what a Fahrenheit means without like looking it up. I will always be on Celsius. That's just the downfall of me. Celsius. Gotta have the Celsius. Gotta keep looking. Quit looking at myself. Nectar of the gods. Funny story. I, uh, hubby gets up and goes to work at like 5.30 in the morning because he has to be um, where he needs to be by 7 and uh, so, so subsequently he has to get up between 5.30 and 6 usually closer to 6 because we're not morning people but uh, this morning you know his alarms start going off at 5.30 so regardless of if he oh I can't my cursor's on my nose I hate that it looks like he's trying to pick my nose sorry side tangent anywho he gets up at 5.30, or his alarms start going off at 5.30, then he gets up somewhere in between there. Uh, he sets his phone alarm, he sets his iPad alarm. They're both loud, they're both obnoxious, and somehow I manage to sleep through them 85% of the time. So he left this morning and he did not turn off his iPad alarm. He snoozed it. Usually he turns it off, which is just, it's neither here nor there. But subsequently, it started going off at like 10 to 6, and the only way for it to stop going off was for me to get up and figure out where the dang iPad was and turn the dang thing off, and then I couldn't get back to sleep. So I've been up since like 6 o'clock this morning. It's currently 
not 12.44. My computer's still in Minnesota time. What time is it? It's 10.44 here uh, in the Pacific Northwest. <sighs> and that was probably really crappy for the mic. I'm sorry. I'm going to be all over the place because, honestly, cold and sinus drugs make me kind of weird. And I'm already pretty weird to start with. So, anywho. So I've been up since 6. It's quarter to 11. I'm on my second cup of coffee. And I'm probably going to go and make some soup when I'm done here. Just saying. I love me some soup. Particularly when I'm not feeling well. So, let's jump right on in here, shall we? Jump right on. Right on in. Of course, I have to take my pen off because I put my pen... My pen. My lammy. I love my lammies. Uh, I put my pen on my show notes and I couldn't see anything. Okay. So, I can move this. See, I have this because it has the picture of what I'm knitting and blah, blah, blah. I tried to be organized. I wrote copious show notes this morning. Um, or was it last night? One of these days I wrote copious show notes and it worked out quite nicely. And later this afternoon I will be blocking all of the things. The sink is finally clean. I can tell you what happens during Christmas, the Christmas season, or the Hanukkah season, or whatever season you celebrate, whatever religious or non-religious or whatever. Whatever you do that involves possibly gifting presents at some point in December, there's usually a big meal. Uh, and we are no exception. Uh, the hubby did up a, a ham. Because he wanted ham. I'm a turkey person, but he wanted ham. Quite frankly, I was sick, so it didn't really matter. It was all going to taste like cough drops anyway. Um, and I got mashed potatoes and gravy, which is pretty much all I need. Just throw the tubers at me. But it also means that during the season of all these cookings and all of these leftover makings, etc., etc., there is never... A, like an empty sink. We are always in between a cycle of dishwashing. So now that the dishwashing is completely done, I can actually like block. There, that that was quite the long story. So I do have a finished object. I almost had two, and I debated, and then I was like, no, I'll save the other one for next week, because then I can at least cheat and say I have a finished object. So I finished the star shower cowl, star shower cowl. I believe it's by Hilary Smith Calais. It might not be. But if you search Star Shower in the search parameters of Ravelry, it will come up. It is a cross between a cowl and a uh, capelets of sorts. It's Once it's blocked, this part here is supposed to get droopy. As you can see, I have not woven in the end. I, I finished it and I was like, hallelujah. And then I just promptly forgot about it. I'm not even going to lie to you. I And my friend Pam said that she has knit with the plucky cashmere and it felt like cashmere and I trust her. Trust me, I trust Pam. Pam knows her yarn. Pam, Pam knows all. I trust. Um, so maybe this was just a bunk batch. I still does not feel like uh, cashmere to me. It feels like a cross between like a croy or it's really croy -y. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with croy but croy is a workhorse sock yarn it's not cashmere and okay end of rant so it's done and it just needs to be blocked it as you can see I suppose I could try it on myself my sister-in-law is like five feet tall and like a size five or something like that I probably shouldn't say that because now she's gonna have body issues but which she doesn't need because she's petite and, you know, tiny. She is tiny. Very tiny. I am not very tiny. There will be no sharing of the clothes between us. Okay, so this, in theory, in theory, once it's blocked, and again, I am not five feet tall. I'm five foot six and I weigh approximately 250 pounds give or take obviously a double extra large kind of lady with with a fairly ample bosom so like I'm, okay this is cute I could do it like this but in the picture she's got it like down 
jauntily over her shoulders and I just don't know if I can I feel like I'm trying to get into a straight jacket and it's not gonna work for me there there if I move it will move and then it won't be on anymore but she has a thinner profile and I'm pretty sure I can block this to be a little bit more wide and there goes the hair so I'm pretty sure I can block it to be more wide it's got this like opening at the back because you knit this little weird cowly bit at the front and it's supposed to flop and and I hope it flops when it's seriously this bra what is up with that I'm sorry this is like a complete malfunction going on here and I'm just I'm trying to keep everything reined in uh, I hope the cowly bit gets floppy. It's floppy in the pictures of the finished object being worn by the person in the pattern pictures. It's floppy. So I'm hoping that it flops and, and looks stylish because otherwise it's going to be a very bizarre little turtlenecky thing and I don't think that's cute. But it's done. She did see the pattern. She did okay the pattern. Um, I know she'll like the color. The color's not an issue. Uh, was it on Instagram or Ravelry? Someone told me that it does open up quite a bit when you block it, so I'm not going to worry. There's got to be a mantra that it'll block out. I'm pretty sure I've said that many a time, and sometimes it actually works. So I'm hoping that is this time. So I did finish this Christmas gift for my sister-in-law, and... As you can tell, it's probably not even going to be mailed until January. I can guarantee that. I can also guarantee that Fliberty Gibbet, I haven't mailed your stuff yet because I'm a horrible person and I've been ill. It's right here. I have your address. It will go out. It will go out with presents for my family. So understand that it's an important thing. It's high there on my list. High up. High up there. And the more I talk, the more the running the run th down the back of the throat. It's not pleasant. I'm sure coffee's not helping, but it's helping me mentally. So we'll just run with that. And now I'm cold. Which is why I brought the clapote. Clapote, clapotis. I say clapotis just to be a dork because I should know better really should. So I have works in progress. See, my notes are over here, which is what, and they're up, which is what, mm -hmm. works in progress. Okay, now this one is going to give me help. Just not, not even. Whatever. Works in progress. I have works in progress. I actually have a fair bit of works in progress. Um, ha 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 ha. Okay. We'll start with the start and end at the end. Or we'll just run through them in a maniacal fashion. Uh, first up that I will show you is the Garden Sprinkle Socks by Little Skein and the Big Wool. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, not sure if that's good. It's hard to tell what's going on there. It's it's free, so I can tell you. It's a slip stitch pattern you insert into a sock. It's very easy. You've seen me knit on it before. This is a Bad Amy bag. I think this was one of my first box bags ever that I purchased. It's old. It's old. It has lived a good life so far. So I've been working on these for a while. They had to go away during the great flea uh, problem, shall we say. There hasn't been a flea in a week and I am happy about that. Well, not a live flea. We did find a dead flea, but it was a very dead flea uh, that probably uh, does not, probably indicates that all the flea crap that they're on is working. So I finished one sock while I was marathoning The Hobbit, because that's what I do. I think I finished it while I was marathoning, or maybe I did it right before. Either way, marathoned The Hobbit last night, lots of knitting got smished in. So I finished the first sock, 
as you can see the pattern here much better see those little slip stitches it's um, what's the repeat on this it's a 12 row repeat it's completely memorizable I just threw in my standard slip stitch heel I did do the patterns around toe because I don't remember doing around toe so I decided to try it out this is the Fright Night colorway by Leading Men Fiber Arts. I believe this is their spotlight base, but I don't have the little thingy in my, my bag because it was in a different bag and it's probably in the garbage now. So it's the 8020 Merino. Uh, and there it is in the skein. So I finished one, started the second one, uh, got through the ribbing. I was, I was, who said it on Instagram? Someone said something about um, uh, ribbing, and I was just like, I can't rib to save my life. Like, I, I can, obviously. I just don't like doing it. I will actually go and finish a different sock if I can get away without doing the ribbing on the second sock. It's always a problem for me. And it's it's not like it takes a long time. It's just, it's, it's a mental block. I don't like doing ribbing. I just do it to get through it. And that's probably why I don't do toe up socks as much because you end on the ribbing and I just feel like that might be enough to just stop me from doing anything. Whereas if I have to get through it to get to the end of the sock, like to, to do the sock, it's like, you know, you start with the crap and you get to the good part. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason, but there's the other one. I have one and a half repeats in it is on, these are, of course these are Chagu, Chiagu, Chagu, Chaigu, whatever. One US1 2.25 millimeter needles for everybody who does millimeters, which is the way I usually do it. I had such great hopes that these would be pair 13 of 2015. I wanted to do 15 in 2015. It's not happening. I might have 12.5. I might. Actually, I'll probably, I, I will have 12.5, I might make it to 13, but then I have to crank this sock out in two days, which is possible. Possible, but I don't know. Maybe, but then, and then that's 13, it's still not 15. However, I was lamenting that fact uh, on Instagram because apparently my entire life is lived on Instagram. And <laughs> And Tracy said we should do uh, 16 in 2016 because uh, she had a baby. So she didn't prolifically knit socks like she usually does. And she's a prolific sock knitter, like 30, 40 pairs, I think she said a year. Like, oh my God, that's a lot of socks. I'm kind of jealous. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I, have to, I have to look up the conversions on the European scale because I am trying to figure out how big the feet she's knitting for are. Are they like US sevens? Because if they're US sevens, then women, then then they're pretty fast. But if we're talking like a men's eleven, then that's going to take a little more time. I'm just curious, really, to see what size of socks she's knitting that she can prolifically knit like thirty to forty socks. Although. She she knits while she reads apparently because I was watching the whip shaming and um, that is a skill I have not yet perfected. I can do it if I'm using my Kindle app, but then I feel guilty because I would. Well, I do read my on my Kindle and I do find that I prefer to read on my Kindle when I'm going to bed, like you know the twenty minutes when you're falling asleep. I twenty minutes when you're falling asleep. Okay, I have a hard time getting to sleep. Okay. When I lay down, my mind goes into overdrive and I think of the 80,000 things. You know what I mean. If you have that problem, you know exactly what I mean. And if you don't have that problem, you don't. So we're all good. But that's when I'll read my Kindle because I don't want to like, I read big books. I like big books and I cannot lie. So it's easier on the Kindle because then you're just holding your Kindle or you're just holding your iPad with your Kindle app and it's not heavy and thusly you can read more. But for the most part, I like to read books, physical, touchy books. I like the smell of books. I like the look of books. I like touching them. It's really I, almost perverse how much I enjoy books. I like seriously, hubby's the same way. So that's all good. Uh, he does prefer the Kindle, but that's mostly because he's on ships and you cannot carry a bunch of books on a ship. 
You can, however, take a Kindle with a bagillion books on it. So his Kindle is pretty stocked up, whereas mine is, we share between the two of them. So I have a lot of his stuff and he tends to read fantasy and that's something I'll go into occasionally, but it's not my bread and butter. Side tangent. So anyway, socks. So one pair of socks. We'll start with the socks. We'll work our way down, shall we? Shall we? That works for me. In my um, zigzag stitches? No. No, 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 no. Bird leg bags. Bird leg bags. I do have the zigzag stitches. I will show you later though. Bird leg bags. Canine bag. Which is exactly why I bought it because I love canine. 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 And then it's got like astral fabric on the inside. See, bird leg bags. This is an old bird leg bag, you can tell. Pew. I've had this one since I lived in Canada. And of course the hubby marked it by putting the Star Wars keychain on it. You can guess that I uh, brought this one along when we went to see the Star Wars movie, uh, which we did the Saturday it opened. It's a very good movie. I am not, I'm a Lord of the Rings geek. I am not a Star Wars or Trek geek. I, I did do a lot of Trek. Mostly because my nan watched it every day when she babysat me from school. But not as much on the Trek and the weird ear thing and the, the second movie. No. But uh, so we went to see. He is a Star Wars fanatic. Not like creepy get dressed up. We, actually, creep, getting dressed up isn't creepy. I mean, he's not. He's not the level of fanboys, the movie, which I do enjoy. I enjoy that movie quite a bit. But he's pretty close. He wouldn't build like the Death Star Lego, but that's probably just because he doesn't like Legos that much. If they had like a mini build your figurine thing, he'd probably do it. So it was part of his Christmas gift was to go to the movie. I bought us tickets for the day after it opened because he had to be on the ship. And I'm a nice wife. That's, that's all there is to say about that. I'm awesome. But I did take these socks. I didn't actually knit on them, though. For the record, it's that good that I didn't knit on socks, which I always copiously do. In fact, I believe I knit a hat during Lord of the Rings, or The Hobbit, one of them. I actually knit on a hat. I know I only got like three or four rows in, but I did actually get the project out and knit on it. So it's got to be good if I'm not getting the socks out, especially since they're these socks. These are my Dia de los Muertos by Desert Vista Dye Works. It is in the... I have the tag in here. Oh, I'm smart. It is the... Desert Vista Dye Works. The Viso... 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 I'm gonna have to ask Susan how to say that. Is it Viso or Vizo? E or A? Vizio. No, that's adding an extra I. Anyway, it's the 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, 462 yards of awesome. And I, see, I posted last night and I had, um, I had one sock done without a heel and then I had the other sock basically to here, like from the top down to here. And I was like, I could finish this and I could have 12 pairs. Well, guess what? I'm going to finish them. I was almost going to finish them before I recorded, but... So this is the first one. And I put the heel on. And there's a little bit of a hole on the side. I didn't pick up on the side. I don't know why, apparently. You know, it was 6.30 in the morning. Let's just be glad I didn't do something really stupid. Because it's altogether possible I'll do something stupid. Um, this is how much I have left. I did knit the cuffs a lot longer. Well, not a lot, but I think I did an extra repeat or two. Longer than I usually do, just because I wanted to use up more. Because I, I, I told you before, I've hoarded this color. I have another skein of this. And, you know, come this October, I will probably buy another one just to have one on hand. I am that person. This is the second sock. So I finished the second sock and it is ready to, it's unzipped, it's ready to have its heel put in. A heel takes me about a half hour, so these are definitely getting done tonight, but that basically puts me at 12 socks. 
12 and a half socks pairs 12 and a half pairs for 2015 because I have one completed of the garden sprinkle is it garden sprinkle garden sprinkles see I want to call it garden confetti I have tried to call it garden confetti when I've talked about it previously but it's garden sprinkles and this one is also in a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle and it's just my standard straight sock I think I picked it up from one of Stephanie Pearl McPhee the yarn harlots books um, I believe she has a simple 64 stitch sock which is what I do I do the ribbing usually in three of the colors of usually I do three stripe like I knit three stripes or if it's five or six then I might go five or six but it, usually it's three uh, stripes of ribbing and then I just transition to solid stockinette I do about seven and a half inches before I put my waist yarn in for my afterthought heel uh, and Pam who I just mentioned will when she's doing her she'll knit from the opposing end of the skein like the outside of your cake for the heel so that she gets the stripe continuity and then she does the heel but she doesn't have to go back and do an afterthought I may have to start doing this I may have to try it because it's brilliant and it seems like there would be less ends to weave. Well, no, there'd be still the same amount of ends. It just seems easier to me somehow. So I like it more. Pinkie Pie. Who is my favorite? Her and Fluttershy. I'm a Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy kind of gal. Don't get me wrong. I love them all. Except Rainbow Dash. She annoys me. And I know she's really popular, but I'm sorry, she annoys the yeah. Just yeah. Side tangents. I was reading somewhere. I'm not sure which board. I was reading on a message board or something about how um, different children shows. And you know, my nieces are like nine now, ten, nine, eight, and seven. I think the nephew's seven. I think that's how it goes right now. And. I had to watch a lot of children's shows. First of all, kudos to all my parents out there who are watching me. I apologize for Caillou or Kalu or whatever the heck his name is. He's Canadian and I'm sorry. We really should have stopped after Tupi and Binu because Tupi and Binu rocks. But that little boy is so bloody annoying. However, I cannot watch Max and Ruby. I can stomach a lot of things, but Max and Ruby, they drive me mental. She's just a bossy little evil thing. I don't like her. And if I ever spawn, that is not being allowed in my house because her just it grates my nerves. But anyway, parents, I don't know how you watch all that junk. I've had to watch it because I was babysitting children and I thought that was too much of it. Except for Tupi and Binu. Love Tupi and Binu. Side tangent. I have no idea which message board. Maybe it was like uh, LSG or CPA or something. I don't know. I just I, I immediately thought of it and I had to say it. So this is my zigzag stitches bag, which I've had for a while. It has a pocket in it, which is nice. I don't actually put anything in the pocket, but I could, which is part of the charm. And in my zigzag stitches, I have my hand spun which is the Pandora's Aquarium by Nitty and Color, which is www.nittyandcolor.com. That'll take you to her Etsy shop. It'll take you to her website. You can hit shop and you can go to her Etsy shop where you should buy all the things. Uh, I would double check in her RAV group. There was a, a discount coupon code recently. I'm not sure if that was good till Christmas or if it was good till the New Year. So double check on that if you're going to go buy some with your Christmas money, which you should, because she's awesome. It's four ounces merino silk, 8020 Pandora's Aquarium. This is my SSK knit along. It's seen some more love. It, you know, I didn't check what needle size this is, and this is one of those ones where it doesn't actually list it on it because it's like a prim or a prime or an inox or whatever they call them nowadays. They're still my favorite. And I'm getting pretty good at it. Again, this saw a, a, a bit of work. It, 
it, it's not going to grow with any tenacity anymore because the rows are getting pretty long. Which means I can knit the same amount of time, I just don't get the same amount of, uh, you know what I mean. I do love the way it's striping occasionally and it's barber pulling in other spots. It's very squishy and wonderful and soft and I love the electricity of the pink combined with the blues and that gorgeous tealy green. It's just, it's yummy. And I am doing the ellipses. Ellipses? I want to say ellipses. Is it called ellipses? Yes. Ellipses Shawl by Romy Hill. You can only buy it as a pattern set. Here's, and here, I'll show you. You're supposed to do tassels. It'll look something like that. Still haven't done my tassels. You can only get that one as part of three. It's the Punctuate series. So you, it's seven bucks. You get all three, and those are the three you get. They are all knit, although the, apo the apostrophe looks like it isn't knit, but it is actually knit, and it looks really cool. I can see myself knitting the other two so it wasn't a real hardship. So that's also on the needle. See, I, I'm making up for having lost my knitting mojo for a while. And -dum 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 -dum. This is going to be a long episode. I hope you like me, because otherwise this is going to suck. Uh, in my Girl Cave bags bag, yes, it has the thingy. My girl cave bag bag, girl cave bags bag. I have the mittens I am working on, and Pam has already finished hers, and Kirby Bird Jess has finished one. So I am horribly behind, but I still got some done, and uh, I don't have it brought up, and I'm not going to bring it up. But this is the girl with the fabricated heart. It's by Spilly Jane. And I am just starting the bottom half of the bust right here. It's purple. It's the bottom half of the bust. Uh, again, it, it just a comatose. Couldn't work on anything. But it is gorgeous, and I do love it. And it's going to fit my hand quite nicely. I did do the largest size, I believe. Or is it the medium? It's the 72 stitch one, but it fits good. I love it. I love working on it. I think once I, once I just, you know, get down some of the stuff, I'm working on a lot of things in sock yarn, and that isn't necessarily the best thing for me to do, and the lighting is so odd, because every time I move, it's going to, I'm using Patton's Croy, some really old Croy, uh, in the flax colorway, so that's a 7525 wool nylon blend. And the purple is my highly coveted soft light kitten, who dies no more. But if you can find it in a de-stash, you should buy it all up. I don't even think people de-stash this stuff, but seriously, buy it. Go find some. Buy it. It comes from New Zealand, where all amazing things come from. And it's Annette, and she's awesome. And uh, not really more than I have to say about that. This is the Muscat, Muse Cat. That just sound that sounds like mucus, so I don't like it. Muscat? I'm gonna call it muscat. She'll correct me. I know she will. If I'm wrong. It is 75% superwash merino, wool 25% nylon, 463 yards of awesome purples. I actually have a sport weight enough to do something out of this. Like like um a good dale or something. Which I may but I'm hoarding it like a dragon hoards coins because a comparison between me and Smaug really makes sense in, in this instance. So this is my first one and Jess and Pam are killing me. Killing me. To be fair, Pam knits very fast. This is the Pam show, by the way. It could easily be anybody from that knitting group though. who I all miss. I miss them all very much. I know they're having wonderful, wonderful holidays and I just, I miss their faces. <sighs> Moment. So in my Ellison bag, E-L-L-I-S-I-N, 
I'm sure she's been pimped on the Nick girls. She uh, she was going to start an Etsy shop, so hopefully that has happened. But this is my Princess Bride bag, and it is my highly coveted bag, which I love. You can pry it from my cold, dead hands. And it, it, it's exquisitely made. Um, there's Inigo Montoya hellos inside. I... Da, 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 da. Like I said, I marathoned The Hobbit, and uh, I didn't want to do ribbing, because ribbing annoys me. So I decided to cast on the Robin hoodie for my husband, because of course he wasn't home, and I figured if he's not here, then maybe, maybe I can I can work on this when he's not home, like when he's when he's gone, and, and then surprise him with it. I don't know if I'm going to go that far. I may have to eventually, you know, put it on him to fit him just to make sure it's the right size because he's got shoulders for days. Um, it's awesome, but like, I mean, it's usually we fit his shoulders before we fit his chest just because he's very statuesque in his build. So I did measurements and I think I have to do one size up for the shoulders and then if I knit it straight down, it might be too big, but then I'm going to put in a zipper. There's going to be a whole schmozzle. So he may end up getting to see it, but I'm going to get it past like the raglan portion before I show him. So I have shown this to you before. It is a cabled hoodie. It's called the Robin hoodie. Um, okay. Why would, okay. By Audrey Nicklin. For some reason they put the author of the Merry Adventures of Robin Hood at the top where you usually see the uh, designer uh, BearEars.com Lit Knits it's from the book Lit Knits or the ebook Lit Knits uh, you can find it on Ravelry, it's the Robin Hoodie actually if you type it in that, that'll pop right up for you so and I screwed up one thing you should never do is you know, watch an involved movie while you're doing cables I had to pick back like four different rows on two different occasions because in this pattern there is, be warned, there is cabling on both right and wrong sides. I So you do a provisional cast on for the hood because you will you will later graft it together, Kitchener, whatever, and um, it's it looks really tiny but it's got a lot of stretch because of course the cables and this is about three repeats of the first chart. So it's the hood, the hood portion getting done. Ta-da! That looks really white and it's not. This is, uh, this is actually my yarn. This is Knitter's Nightmare in the Wickedly Worsted, which is a Superwash Merino nylon. I no, just Superwash Merino? I think. I don't have a ball band right here, but I know there's Merino and it's Superwash. I don't think there's nylon in it. I don't think I got the nylon content. But it is really pretty. It's a Neptune colorway. And I caked up two balls. I did dye them all at I, M, them. I dyed them all at the same time. So there shouldn't be too much color variation, but I am still going to alternate colors. However, what I wanted to do was knit down half a ball and then start changing the colors. That would be beetle, beetle fur. And then start alternating the colors every couple rows. Um, just because then I won't be finishing two balls at the same time. I'll be finishing one and then the other. It's just a continuity thing for me. I don't think he even cares if it comes out like, if there's a noticeable difference. There shouldn't be though, because all of the scans were dyed at the same time and they do look very um, similar. So there you have it, and it's just a shaded um, blue, blue, bluey green, not really green, a uh, darker blue, blue. He wanted blue, so and I've started that. I'm about halfway down the hood. Then I get to do the raglan setups, and then I'll determine whether or not I need to actually show it to him before I continue or if I can get away with keeping going because I, I'd like him to be surprised but I don't know if I can actually make that work. 
and have it fit him properly. Plus, I'm gonna put in a zipper. The nice part is though, hold on. Chug. The nice part is, show you the picture again. Look, there's the recording. Um, if you look at the, the neckline here, you will see that it actually, you start it separated for the raglan, and it says if you want to lower the neckline to just keep knitting that particular pattern all the way down. Uh, so, again with the bra. I hope there's nobody who's like really easily offended by breasts. But if you're really easily offended by breasts, you haven't watched my podcast long enough. But I think I may just keep repeating that particular pattern and leave the opening and then pick up and knit uh, essentially a button band without buttons on it and sew the zipper onto that. Because he really does want a zip because he's constantly either like taking his hoodie off or putting it back on or taking it off or putting it back on. Like, you know, he, he gets hot and cold really. He facilitates, facilitates, fluctuates cycles, whatever. He goes from being hot. I get, I get it because I'm the same way. That's why I don't like wearing sweaters or knit sweaters. That's why I primarily knit cardigans is because I have found that when I wear knit sweaters, I get really warm and I want to take it off. And then I take it off and I look like butt because it's got like, you know, it screws up my hair and I've probably sweat copiously underneath the sweater. So it is what it is. And so I understand his conundrum means I'm probably going to try and put a zipper in if I can, if I have that mental power. Hopefully I have that mental power, otherwise it'll suck. So let me just double check here. Yes. I have no spinning. None. Not a damn thing. So I will show you my cross stitching and then I will discuss some plans for 2016 since this is the year end episode. Uh, so if you don't like cross stitch, you can fast forward. Like I said, this is going to be a long episode. Dang it. I didn't show you this last week, but I did finish it in time to give it to the hubby for Christmas. I don't think I showed it to you last week, but I'll show it to you again in case I did. Ta-da! This is a hardcore stitch core on Etsy Corps. Sorry, C-O-R-P-S, but you say core. Uh, I think it's five dollars. Might be seven. It's either five or seven. Very easy. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of technical uh, nuances to this, but I did do this up for the hubby. I think I'm going to mount it on a piece of canvas so he can, uh, of course, take it in his rack hang it in his rack while he's not here. And if I if we get it framed with glass, then it's just, it's gonna, if he took it, it would get broken. But I can just mount it on some canvas and then it'll be fine and it's cheaper and that's the way I like it. So I finished that. I am so snotty, I apologize. I also finished this one. There you go. You've seen this one before. This is a Mill Hill kit. Bring it up here. You can see all the beads. You can see all the... There are a lot of beads. If I hold it like this, you can see that there's a butt ton of beads. It is a Mill Hill button and bead kit. Uh, it's an autumn kit. It's called Ravens, even though I'm calling them my crows. And now I just have to order the frame. Mill Hill actually makes frames that are exactly designed for these. And they're they're not expensive. I think they're fourteen bucks. So I'm gonna just grab. A f I'm gonna buy a frame and put it in there and call it a day. I really love them. I think they're adorable. I had a lot of fun. I might have to pick up another one of these kits because it's awesome. I will now proceed to put it in here so it doesn't get hurt. Uh, da -da 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 -da. One of my Christmas presents this year from my hubby was, and this is going to like send stuff all flying, and I'm sorry there's going to be glare because it's, you know, got plastic on it, is Frederick the Literate, which is a kitty, in a bookshelf because that is awesome. 
And the books are like, they're cat themed. So it's instead of A Tale of Two Cities, it's A Tale of Two Kitties, The Three Mouseketeers, uh, etc, etc. Which is cute and cool and awesome. So I started that because I had to. Um, I put the bat in time out because it felt like it. So I get to turn this. And I've actually gotten pretty pretty decently far. You can see the paw. The paw. And there's a little face outline starting there. And of course here's the ledge that separates the books. It's on 14 count Ada. It is a dimensions kit or a Janlin kit? It's a dimensions kit, which means it comes with the threads pre-sorted, which is lovely. Here, I'll, I can show you the back here. See those, um, this, these, these things? So all the threads come pre-sorted and numbered. So when I cut them off, because you have to cut them off, it says to pre-cut them off and put them on a punch card, and I'm like, no, too much effort. So I just, I cut a string off as I use it, and then I loop it around that color block because it'll stay there. And I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. This is the first cross stitch where I've had to blend. If you look, if you look right in this dark brown that's next to the black, there's actually two different colors of DMC there, or whatever they, they put in that's DMC-like. There's actually two colors and it creates a heathered mottle look. And as you can see, there has a, the downfall of Black Ada, aside from the fact that working on it at night really sucks, is that it will collect cat hair like nobody's business. And for some reason, even though one of, the, one of them's black and white, so her black should be fine. And then Petrie has black in her too, but seems to be only the white furs get stuck on this. But I like it so far. It's really fun. It's really easy. I also, because the threads are so long, I'm trying the loop method for for uh, affixing my threads to begin with. You can look it up on YouTube if you're interested and you haven't done it. It's kind of nice. Uh, a way not to have to hold the end while you start. I'm, I'm really looking forward to finishing that. I also, because apparently I needed to do a million things, I made, I never got, I never jumped on this train when it started before, but apparently I have a finish all the things, uh, a vibe, or a use up things, and I'm, you know, some people are calling it mindful knitting, or they're saying they want to, you know, cold sheep and decrease the stash, or something or other, or, you know, there's all these altruistic reasons, or we want to enjoy our stuff or not feel overwhelmed, etc., etc. No, I just want shit, okay? I want socks. Therefore, I'm going to knit a bunch of socks. It has... I'm not buying yarn, because right now, that is not a feasible option for us. Uh, and I've got a crap ton. Like, a crap ton. I bought it because I like it, so I'm going to knit it, and I'm going to wear it. And that's the end of that. It's not being mindful. I want socks. And... I have a bunch of scraps, and I like scraps, like, you know, I've made a blanket already, I've got another blanket on the go that's probably never going to get finished, but I decided to make some magic cake ruffle shawl cakes, which was a pattern by Paula from the Knitting Pipeline, which is like Paula Emm Emmons Feasley or something, Emmons Beasley, Lemons Beasley, I don't know, Paula from the Knitting Pipeline podcast. Uh, she designed it, and there's a YouTube that she links to, and so I kind of followed her instructions, and I kind of didn't when it came to grammage, because I felt like it. So I made two of these, and I will probably cast them on in the new year, because Magic Kick Ruffle Shawls sound amazing. And that side looks, like, way worse. And it really does eat up quite a bit of your leftover yarns. So these ones have already been made into squares that are already in the husband's uh, barn raising quilt square blanket. So why not? Why not? I could get a couple shawls. If they don't work for me, I can give them away as gifts. It's always good to have spare knitting uh, held up as gifts. Two more things I felt like talking about. And, and it's almost an hour, so I'm going to be quick. But uh, you can see right there, right there, see that basket? You know what that basket is? Awilda turned me on to this thing 
uh, which is a 12 things in 12 months make thing. Okay, you know, like some people do their own DIY sock clubs. Uh, this is a, a kind of a DIY knit some stuff club. So you're supposed to take 12 yarns, throw them in bags, and throw them in something. So I put 12 in there. I d went a little differently because when I I have an issue that if I get yarn or if I if I what I've found with my socks which are right there I've got a bunch of sock yarns they're all in brown bags they're in a Rubbermaid do you know what I do I go grab one but what I find problematic with this is then I have to pick a pattern the pattern picking is almost harder than picking yarn because if you've already got your yarn in hand then you're fine right you know what yarn you're gonna use but picking the pattern is really hard after that. So for these ones, I went through my queue and I picked out some patterns that I have been wanting to knit for quite some time. I think one is dates back to 2010. And they've, they've been in my queue and I haven't taken them off because I really do want to knit them. They've, they've been in there for a reason. So I grabbed the yarns that I felt would go good with it for whatever reason and I'm going to knit them in that. So each of those yarns has a correlating pattern. And then on my phone, my, my phone case, that was, that was a Christmas gift. I love it. I have a sheepy on my phone. I am going to, so on my phone has the pattern and the yarn listed. So when I pull out one of these, January 1st and the first of every following month, I can go look on my phone, see what pattern I, I said it was for, and get started on that and just just truck, just keep trucking. So between those and 16 pairs in 2016, you'd think that's crazy enough? You think that's crazy enough? It's not. I got word that my best friend, who lives in New Zealand, is engaged, which is awesome. I've been waiting for this for a while now, so she's engaged. And uh, she asked if she could borrow my wedding shawl. My wedding shawl's blue. I love blue. It works for me. Okay, she's doing the big old big white wedding. Blush and bride big white wedding. And I'm like, yeah, no. No, no. And I said, I'll make you your own. So I sent her some patterns to choose from. I will be over the next year because I have until February 2017. And it's probably going to take me that long. Just so you know, I will be knitting the even star with the beaded edging. You can tell I love her, right? Like we're, we're sisters. Um, she was my only maid of honor, um, best mate, whatever, bridesmaid, uh, and at my wedding. And, you know, she was here last Christmas and we Christmased together. She's, she's a member of my family and, and so much more than a sister. And she wants the even star. That's the one she picked and I will make it, and I will beat it, and it will be awesome, and she will look beautiful. She'll look beautiful either way, but then she'll have a really wicked shawl to look beautiful with. So, I will be knitting the even star. And hopefully, health depending, I, uh, if, I'm, if I'm well enough, and I get it, and I save up enough money, etc., I will be going to attend the wedding in February. So I will probably want to see my Kiwis when I go down. But there's a lot of planning. Again, February 2017. It's far way off, but given that the In Dreams took me nine months and the Even Star I think is a little bigger, but less beads, 2,000 less beads, I should be able to get it done faster. Maybe. I don't know. I hate circular shawls. But she wants it. And it will be done. I think that's everything I have to say. I have cross stitch. I'm cross stitching like crazy and I'm going to cast on a new one or well cast on. I'm going to start a new one January 1st because that's what I'm doing. And I'm going to cast on all the knitting projects on January 1st and I better have socks done on January 1st and I apparently am putting way too much stock in this new year BS. But maybe it'll be worth it. It's something. It's something. I got to have something. And so this will be your year-end episode. I'll see you in the new year. We will be another year older. When I podcast, we will be in the new year. It'll be 2016. 
and it seems like only yesterday I was ringing in the Millennium at a rave that got busted by the cops. It was fun. I'm so old now. I just it's the olden days. It's what it is. So I am going to go. I'm going to get my knitting done. I'm going to block like crazy. I'm going to try and get some housework done while I'm feeling spry. Maybe make some soup like I said I would. I hope everyone has a great day, a great week, great end of the year. Stay safe. If you are going somewhere, do not drive drunk. Don't drive buzzed. Walk home. Call a cab. Make a plan to sleep on the floor. End of story. Don't tolerate that BS. If you're going to be drinking, have a safe ride. Seriously. And yeah, next year. Bye.